thank you everybody for joining us for this Open Education Week presentation. And Dr. Erica Fulton has graciously agreed to present to us today. And she is a cognitive psychologist and an associate professor in the psychology department. Although she has yet to win a teaching award at ISU, she has been nominated several times by her department, um, maybe next year. Her research specialties include memory, metacognition, and cognitive aging, the first two of which were interests sparked while working in K-12 education for 10 years before deciding to pursue her advanced degrees. She feels fortunate that her research areas are directly applicable to her work as a teacher and research mentor, and that her experiences as an educator provide valuable insights into her research activities. Erica first learned about OER while representing the GEM Objective 6, Social and Behavioral Ways of Knowing at the State Board of Education Annual Summit several years ago. Although she was resistant at first, she finally took the plunge to adopt OER in two classes this semester. And so we're very excited to hear from you today, Dr. Fulton, um, and the time is now yours. Great, thank you. Um, real quick, I am doing this from home. My dog is behind me. Hopefully he won't interrupt, but <laughs> I know. Um, so yes, so I adopted OER in two classes, but I really, uh, I only had planned to do it in one, and so um, and that's intro psychology, and that's the one that I'm going to be talking about. the The second one, True Confession, it's a it's an upper level class, cognitive processes, and I only adopted OER in there because. Um, I had misremembered sending the textbook information to the library, uh, so I didn't actually send them my choice, and I didn't think it was fair to students to or the library to suddenly um, have them scramble. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> so why did I choose OER? Um, many years ago, I was the GEM Objective 6 representative or one of them um, from ISU to the State Board of Ed annual summit. And at that time, one of the things they asked us to consider was whether or not we were using open education resources already. And if not, what were the costs of our current materials? And so people from all GEM uh, objectives uh, chimed in and overwhelmingly people said that they felt like they were, if not using OER, using affordable materials, that they had taken that into account when choosing. Um, with the exception of some people in the humanities who quite rightly said, well, I'm not going to assign the cliff notes of famous literature. They do have to actually buy uh, the novel. Um, and then also some people in the uh, the hard sciences like chemistry saying, you know, we would love it if the book were cheaper, but you know, the cheapest one is just two hundred dollars, and there's there's no such thing as a, a good quality uh, free chemistry text that they were aware of at the time. Um, so I've I've had OER in the back of my mind for a while, but at the time it just felt like one more thing I had to do and figure out. So I was pretty resistant um, other than negotiating with um, the publisher of our intro psych textbook to get our book very affordable. And we did, I think it, it was down to maybe $30, which I, I consider um, very reasonable. And um, uh, I sort of left it at that. Um, over the years, uh, I was asked by the chair of our department uh, whether I was using OER, whether I was considering OER, and I was told that that question came from, from our dean, um, Candy. And uh, I just said, no, but I think we have the book, um, I think we have a cheap enough book. And so it was left at that. And then true confession, and this is the, or not true, yeah, just being honest, uh, this middle picture, um, it wasn't until there was this financial incentive, the, the $1,200 to develop OER that I said, okay, you know, I'll do it. Because quite honestly, um, it, you know, I, I do feel like academics do a lot of work that goes uncompensated. Um, and I felt like uh, I was probably going to be asked to do OER eventually, um, if not from ISU administration, from some director from the State Board of Ed. So I said, well, if I'm going to have to do it eventually, I might as well get paid for it. <laughs> and then this, the other picture of just, you know, peeking through the hands, I, I was genuinely curious at this point, too. It wasn't just for uh, the financial incentive. Um, I was curious if I could um, provide equal quality um, 
in my in my teaching of this course to past semesters while also making it more affordable for students. So where did I search? Well, I uh, I, I searched the ITRC website that IUCU has. Um, there were lots of links to various things related to OER, um, but they were some good good resources. Everything from where you can search for. OER resources relevant to your discipline, to debates on OER, um, some compelling arguments in favor of OER. Then I just did what any reasonable person would do, which is I just Googled OER in psychology. Um, I Googled how to choose OER and um, how to make your own OER. Um, I skimmed various online textbooks, which fortunately already existed in the um, in, in psychology, quite a few of them. And I skimmed the websites that were associated with those textbooks to see what the options were. Um, some of them had more than one textbook or to see what kinds of bells and whistles or extra resources um, each of the online textbooks came with. And then it turned out that um, I'd saved a lot of emails over the years that I'd sort of forgotten about you know, emails from, say, the Society for Teaching of Psychology, where, where people were already asking about OER and what others had done, um, and found some really good information um, in, in those emails. And so I, you know, went to various links and, and read up on other things that I might not have found in my original Google search. Um, I also... Uh, search the teaching and learning um, organizations that other campuses have. Um, Iowa State, I think it was, was one of the ones that I thought was really good. And then also some community colleges in California, because I think of our students here at ISU as being com pretty comparable to a lot of community college students, um, given our uh, acceptance rate and, you know, the preparedness for college relative to other places I I've taught, um, like Georgia Tech and Wesleyan. So how did I choose? Um, well, I read some debates on OER and I can I can share some of what I read if people are curious. Um, not everyone is pro OER. Um, and even those who are see the pros and cons of OER. Um, I considered usability for, um, for the student and for myself. So I looked at length, the average chapter length in, a, in an intro psych textbook is about 30 pages. Um, so I was looking for things that had shorter chapters than that, which they all did, and they tend to uh, tended to be between 15 and 20 pages. I looked for readability for the student. Um, I looked for flexibility. So um, some textbooks are just one PDF. Um, the whole textbook is one PDF. Others are set up um, either separate PDFs, separate Word docs, or uh, web versions that allow you to mix and match, right? So you might like chapter one, two, and three, but chapter four, you can pull uh, from another place. So the flexibility to kind of create your own textbook if you wanted, but also use uh, a ready-made uh, textbook that was at least good enough. I also considered add-ons. Um, so some of them can, you know, came with quizzes that, that I could use and didn't have to develop my own, even though I already had, had my own. Um, some of them came with um, really good resources on uh, note taking, um, time management um, for intro psych students, and uh, some even came with what are called uh, reading anticipation guides. Um, so kind of a metacognitive tool um, that students follow along um, or that they sort of fill out before they read and then revise it after they've read the chapter. Of course, I considered quality, and I think this is the, the biggest concern for, um, for a lot of us, at least back in the, the State Board of Ed uh, summit days. Um, you know, well, would a, an OER version actually be as good as a fully professionally published source? So, of course, I considered accuracy. Um, that, that didn't seem to be the biggest problem. They were all accurate. Um, completeness was a little bit more challenging because with shorter chapters that maybe make students more likely to read and finish them, that comes sometimes at a cost. They were less complete. Um, a recency, so some of the OERs had not been revised in you know seven to 10 years, and that concerned me, especially um, in a scientific field. 
Um, I look for similarity to current textbooks. Um, one is kind of um, just a general marker of quality, but also because my lectures um, you know, had revolved around primarily um, the other textbooks. And I didn't know if I'd have to change my lectures drastically um, if the OERs were, were too dissimilar. And then I looked at author qualifications. And this is actually a perk of OER because um, you know, most textbooks, at least in my field, are written by you know, one to three people who are writing on you know, uh, probably 15 topics that they don't know well and one topic that they do know well. Um, the advantage of OER is that uh, there are experts writing uh, writing on their their area so for instance the memory chapter is written by memory researchers the sensation chapter is written by sensation researchers and not just one person who's maybe a really good teacher which which has its advantages too um, I considered low cost print options because I know some students don't want to um, uh, read online and a lot of you know the OER is I mean, my field is all online and sure you can print out that PDF um, and but that can actually cost a lot if you're printing all the pages and some um, some sources of the OER actually would would send you a low cost print option if you really wanted it. I am confined by the GEM objective six competencies, so I can't I mean, I kind of teach whatever I want, but I also have to teach. Um, you know, because it's a gen ed course, I have to teach to those competencies. So I had to make sure that the, the OER um, was, was not wildly different from, from what those cover. And then I considered things that maybe were more just important to me and the students, balancing predictability with variety. Um, I had to think about scalability to different class sizes and levels. So I teach intro psych anywhere from like a 15 student class to 120 person class, um, and I teach both regular and honors sections. So I, I didn't want to have to create, you know, 10 different versions of my OER class to accommodate all of them. And then I wanted to make sure there was something in the book, either the way that it was written or the activities that it included, um, that um, would not just, uh, you know, drive home certain concepts, but actually um, expose students to things, um, develop their critical thinking and communication skills. Okay, so how long did I spend and how long do I think it would take for others? So honestly, I had no real idea. Uh, when I first started researching it, I was like, okay, I, I want to know and I know that I'm going to be asked <laughs> to answer this question. So I started to take some notes um, on how much time I, I was spending. And then I just, I don't know, maybe out of laziness or, or uh, you know, I just stopped recording it. And I also just found that I was kind of multitasking and, and I, I didn't want to be like a lawyer writing down every six minute bit of work that I did on this. Um, so I don't really know how long it took me, but I did try to consider how much I was getting paid for it, right? <laughs> and not spend, you know, twice as long, you know, I, did, I didn't want it to sort of calculate to, oh, I got paid $5 an hour for all the work that I did on this. So I think I did a, a, enough um, that it was substantial and, and I earned the money, but I didn't kill myself um, trying to do it. I do think that you could spend a lot less or a lot less uh, or a lot more time than I did. Um, and that that's, you know, your personal decision about what's the return on investment, right? So, you know, I didn't read every page of every textbook option. You know, I did a lot of skimming um, when, and some satisfying, like, you know, this is this I think will be good enough. I'll try it out and then I can modify it in future semesters. I do think it's highly dependent on the topic and the discipline. I'm very fortunate in that I teach a subject for which OER already exists um, and multiple options, and they've been around for years. So some, uh, some of them have been revised more than once. Um, I can't imagine trying to do this um, in, a, in a different discipline where really you are maybe having to create all of it uh, yourself. Um, feedback from students. Um, so first of all, I want to I want to preface this with I'm an experimental psychologist, so I don't give a lot of weight to these anecdotes, but I'll share them because I know people are probably curious. You know, I do controlled experiments where we make causal attributions. Um, but anyway, so um, feedback from students. Of course, they love that it's free. 
Um, and I do think that's a, a big perk. Um, I do give surveys, always have in my classes um, at the beginning of a class or beginning of a semester, and then also midway through. Um, the the mid-semester feedback survey is um, tapping into you know how their perceptions of how things are going so that so that I can adjust. Um, so from that survey for this semester, um, I added uh, two questions that I think are most relevant to this presentation, which is um, how satisfied they were with the OER textbook. And as you can see, um, that averaged, um, and it's, this is not the full sample because not every student responded, um, but that averaged to about 6.8 out of 10. Now, I don't really have a point of comparison. Um, I didn't ask students, you know, in the last 15 years that I taught this class necessarily, uh, how satisfied they were with the textbook um, on a one to 10 scale. So um, I guess interpret this how you want. Um, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's better than five, but it seems like it could be better than 6.8. Um, but uh, it remains to be seen how, how to improve that, that satisfaction. I mentioned on an earlier slide that uh, there's this um, reading anticipation guide, um, a tool that came with the textbook that I chose, which asks them you know, to say true or false to um, a statement about a psychological phenomenon. And some of them are sort of common myths. And then they read the chapter and then they have to reflect on whether they were right or wrong and show that they, they read the chapter and understood it. And um, this, that's the first time I've used a tool like this and students were satisfied about 6.4 out of 10. So again, I guess better than five, um, would like this to be better. Um, I think, um, so anecdotally, some students said that they uh, really liked it and they really felt like it helped them learn and stay on top of things. I imagine that some students don't like it because it's effortful and they'd rather just not read and just show up to class. Um, and there are some students who just don't do it, <laughs> just do not do it, and they're not uh, not succeeding in the class. Um, a few students did say that, um, and I, I feel like compared to past evals, I've gotten a few students wanted more detail um, in my lecture, and I don't, because I don't usually get that, um, I'm I'm curious if that is a function of using an OER text, which is shorter and has less detail in it. So those are that's something I'll have to explore and, and weigh the pros and cons of. Um, and I can I can share some more detailed feedback if people are curious. So are students learning? Well, I don't know if this is a popular response, but what is learning? Um, one of my areas of research is learning or, or memory. Um, and so I don't think that uh, students' perceptions and evals measure learning. I think they measure perceptions and customer satisfaction. Um, that's not to say we can't glean some interesting tidbits from, um, from their feedback, um, but I would uh, need a lot more data <laughs> um, to answer this question. Um, first of all, I haven't even finished a whole semester teaching with OER. But also there's things that, that I really value in my teaching that are a lot harder to measure. So um, I, it's important to me to expose students to really um, complicated things or unique things that I don't necessarily test them on. And so I'm not actually measuring their learning of. Um, I also take the approach that, uh, you know, biologically there are, there are neurons that increase their communication with each other. Um, but at a uh, below a threshold that can actually be measured uh, through through quizzes and surveys. I also focus on some skill development, right? So I'll, I'll do in class activities where students are, um, you know, working working with their peers to answer sort of a high level question that doesn't really have a right answer. Um, and so I'm assessing. Uh, more of their effort and depth of thought than I am true learning or regurgitation of information. So, um, and as I already said, you know, it, it's too early, I think, to really say if my students are, are learning and if they're learning differently or better or worse than, than with a non-OER uh, textbook. So insufficient data. How does all of this affect Teaching, again, I think more data is needed. Um, and also as an experimental psychologist, um, there, there's, 
there's really no way with naturalistic studies like this to know what's causing what, if anything. So if, if, uh, if quiz scores go up while I'm using OER, I don't know if that's a function of the OER text, or I'm, I've been teaching longer, I'm a better teacher, or I've, you know, I've made tweaks in other ways. So when, I, when I'm teaching, I think like all of us, I'm not, I'm not doing it like I do experiments where I'm only changing one, one variable and, and none of the others. So I think it's a, a really big open question um, how it's affecting uh, student learning and also my own teaching. As I said before, um, there, there are potentially some knowledge gaps given that the chapters are shorter, but I might say that there's knowledge gaps for the students who really do do the reading and rely on it, but maybe the students who wouldn't normally read a chapter that's 30 pages are actually reading the 15 page chapter and doing the reading anticipation guide. So maybe for them, there's fewer knowledge gaps than there would be otherwise. So I think that like, the devil is in the details and there could be a bimodal distribution there. Um, like I said, I think uh, this will depend on your field or topic or experience with it. I've taught intro psych for many, many years. Um, I do not recommend adopting OER for something that you're less from, for a topic you're less familiar with or a topic that you don't have much experience with because or at least in my in my area, um, the chapters are, are shorter, and uh, um, you 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 have to fill in a lot more gaps than you might otherwise. But I did make um, a lot of notes for future renditions, so I didn't I didn't use all the bells and whistles that came with the OER. I used just a couple. Um, and I'm I'm pretty excited and curious to see how um, adding some more of those things or, or making some changes could prove that OER is, is actually more beneficial um, than it might seem right now, which it seems a little bit more sort of neutral to me right now. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess I'll just uh, leave off with, um, with this before I take questions. Um, if you have doubts about OER, um, I found this informative and compelling um, and sort of convincing me to at least try OER. Um, but I will say that, you know, I have no, no regrets trying it. And I think I will keep trying it for at least a couple more semesters. Um, but for me, the jury is still out on whether, you know, it, it's, it's the way to continue uh, teaching or if I might revert back to um, a different text. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate all of that information. Does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask? Spencer, yeah, go ahead. Thank you for your presentation. I was wondering, so in the end, you said that you looked at many different variations of textbooks and different things. Were you able to cobble together different chapters or did you find and select one um, OER iteration or edition, I guess? Yeah, good question. Um, I have the option to do either, but I, I decided to take the path of least resistance and and choose the one that was um, that was already a full textbook that kind of mirrored um, many of the other more traditional textbooks, and then kind of see how things went. And then in the fall, I plan to consider swapping out some chapters if I find um, either better versions or. Um, actually, so there, so a traditional psych textbook has about 16 chapters. And so if you, if you pick the sort of ready-made one um, that I did, it also has roughly 16 chapters, but there are a lot more chapters to choose from. Um, so I could, I could choose to just cover different topics. So not necessarily a better version of the same topic. I could actually cover different topics. Um, and I, I don't know, I think that would be really fun to try, but I am somewhat limited by, um, you know, the, the GEM 6, uh, Objective 6 requirements, right? So and uh, apparently I'm not allowed to skip, you know, the stress chapter. There's certain things that I'm not allowed to skip because, you know, they're on the MCAT or they're required for majors outside of my own. And this is a class that a lot of um, um, other majors um, are required to take for their major. Thank you. Yeah, those are good points. Any other questions that you have for Dr. Fulton? 
I guess I do have another question. Uh, you said that some of the options that you found uh, did come with uh, supply quiz questions or other um, maybe modules or something like that. You you say that you have your own quiz questions, right? Mm -hmm. Were there other uh, add-ons maybe that you used um, or found helpful? Um, well, I mentioned at the beginning that I use some of the, the sort of more um, study skills resources. So I, I had made my own, but I found some that I thought were better than what I created. So the things on like note taking and time management, um, th those were OER materials, uh, add-ons that I gave to my students. Um, and then the reading anticipation guide um, that, that they do before every chapter before and after every chapter, that was an add-on that I didn't have to create that I that I have found really helpful and students, at least some of them seem to think is really helpful. Um, other add-ons are, are kind of in my list of, you know, things to try for future renditions. Um, I, my quiz question, I, I kept using my own quiz questions because they, um, they reflect what I cover in lecture. And I do tell people that, that lecture sort of you know, more important than the reading or, you know, or like the, what I emphasize in lecture is, is the most important. Um, but that doesn't mean that my quiz questions are amazing and, and shouldn't be at least partially replaced by, by the quiz questions that they offer. But it's also OER, so students can find those quiz questions, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think they, they do try to limit the amount or that those questions are available because I think what I've seen in OpenStax I think is that uh, you have to be a professor to, to get access to the answers or something in some cases but, um, but I think that's pretty interesting. Does anyone else have any questions they'd like to ask Dr. Fulton before we end today? Well if there are no other questions thank you very much for joining us today for this presentation and um, Dr. Fulton for presenting on your experience with OER. Uh, we really appreciate all of the work that you have put into this and the benefit that it gives students is, is going to you know, happen semester after semester, hopefully for years to come. So we look forward to hearing an update on your data gathering. Thank you for having me.